Hey addicts, welcome back. We're here for another light novel review. I'm so sad that Michael's not here with me right now, uh, but I will go on in his name. <laughs> so um, with that being said, guys, we're here to talk about The Faraway Paladin. This is a light novel that I've had in my Amazon Kindle library for too long. Uh, I've had it for probably like two or three years or however long it's been out. I feel like I uh, bought it when it was still not that well known and now he's had so many volumes come out. Um, and so it was just time. I think I even saw a comment on the channel a while ago saying, you should read this series. And I'm like, yeah, I actually own that. I need to read that. So uh, we're here. Uh, so to give you a little bit of an idea, um, this is a fantasy story uh, like most uh, <laughs> anime light novels, I guess. Uh, but, or Japanese light novels, I should say. But um, this is more inspired or based around how traditional fantasy was so you do have more of a um old school magic system and kind of just how i guess i could say the best word to describe it is just the more grittiness of fantasy um not so much the contemporary way that fantasy stories are written or how their worlds work um and that you know while a lot of the things that they can use are powerful they are also uh, can be just as destructive to the people that wield it. Um, so that is a very cool aspect of this uh, book just right out the gate. Um, this is, even though it is also, you know, a fantasy story or a fantasy story primarily, it is also a reincarnation or uh, if Michael is here, probably say it's more in line or more akin to the um, Chinese cultivation stuff that he reads um, with that being, you know, a focus as well. Um, this book actually starts out with... Um, the main character, uh, kind of, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, not necessarily clear cut, but kind of you get the feel of, you know, he's either, this is moments after death, or this is in the process of being reborn into this new world. Um, and I think probably one of the things that's best about this book is just a lot of the uniqueness or uh, very... I don't want to say niche, but um, just, uh, you know, the fact that you don't really see many stories uh, cut like this in a way. Um, obviously, there's a lot of stories that deal with reincarnation or, you know, tell, uh, you know, isekai type stuff. Um, I do think those elements, though, that are a bit more familiar to people are executed well. Uh, for instance, the resurrection aspect. Um, did I say resurrection? I mean reincarnation, if I... Uh, should correct myself there. Um, but the reincarnation aspect I think is really cool that, uh, you know, uh, he kind of has these memories of his past life and instantly he's like, wait, I'm like a baby. I'm an infant. Uh, but, you know, he's not able to uh, think very clearly. Like his, you can kind of tell his thinking's kind of hazy and also, you know, he's very tired because I think it illustrates, you know, just like the fact of, you know, what a baby's perception probably is or like you know a child's perception is and I think they do a good job of not only explaining why um you know maybe he's not able to just sit there as a baby and think of like all these different things and it's primarily I guess the reasoning at least that I take from it is that you know because the child's mind isn't uh, developed, you know, or at least it's not as developed as uh, an adult mind is, is that, you know, his kind of conscious as an adult from a previous life is suppressed a bit. And so he can only think, you know, either in many uh, minimal tasks or, you know, in minimal ways or just, you know, for not very long periods of time. Um, so there is that passage of time uh, jumping, you know, or not jumping, but um, kind of speeding up uh, his life. The other cool thing about this that I really dig is that um, it's just kind of like the mystery behind the story. So not only is he reincarnated uh, seemingly as an infant laying on the floor in like a deserted place, um, but he is also found and also taken in by undead, uh, a group of undead people. And um, you get introduced to these characters and um, there's very few characters in this first volume. Uh, this main character uh, ends up being named William, or Will for short. Um, you get uh, this ghostly figure, which is um, his, I guess, quote-unquote, um, 
you know, the grandfather of his uh, adopted family or his uh, New World family. And this uh, ghostly figure is named Augustus. Uh, he is, uh, I think, um, I don't know if I wrote it down, but uh, he is known as uh, something, Wandering Sage, I think. Uh, but he's a very powerful mage um, and sorcerer. And then you get Blood, who is actually the person that found Will, um, who is this gigantic, almost um, giant-sized skeleton warrior. And then you also, uh, or I should say, um, f not forget to mention that Blood's kind of his father figure. And then you get Mary, who is uh, essentially his mother, uh, who is a mummy priestess. And um, you get to see Will grow up, learn about the world, um, learn about the magic. I think the magic is probably one of the things that again, harkens back to more traditional fantasy novels um, with it kind of working around um, a word system. So there's kind of like the language of the gods and you can either write it in the air or say it. And depending on how well you're able to uh, write it or, or clearly you're able to write it or how, a you know, neatly you're able to pronunciate i probably messed that up i probably should have flip-flopped those anyway um <laughs> sorry my brain does that all the time um but how you're able to uh, clearly pronunciate those words it has greater power has greater effect um but some things have a inverse um reaction to the world it's kind of like one of those that the author can explain it a little bit better than i can and it would take a while to uh you know go into too much depth about it but um the magic system is pretty cool and how it works and just um, the level of kind of um, give and take it has uh, with the characters that wield it. The other cool thing is that um, the kind of the lore behind the world. So the, uh, the creation of the world, um, kind of how, I guess you could say, the, the power structure of the greater forces of the world. Um, kind of resembles Christianity in a way um, with there being one God that created things with the power of, uh, you know, the, the language of the gods with the magic that's kind of, you know, still um, used for the humans and the other races. Um, but he also, you know, gets into more of a fantasy element where he created good and bad gods underneath him and they turned against him, or I guess propensity to do good and evil and you know some of them ended up being bad some of them ended up being good and now they're pinned against together and there's kind of that warring faction there um but probably the biggest thing that i think is a standout that you don't see very often is there is almost an isolation factor to this volume and i think it just adds to the whole aesthetic and vibe that the the story is going um, you know, there's a lot of times where, you know, Isekais or, you know, maybe even reincarnation stories, uh, kind of try to sensory overload you with, uh, or even the character of like, whoa, look at all this different stuff. Look at how vibrant the world is. There's magic in the world. Whoa, that's so cool. You know, all these different elements that lead to, you know, maybe the character, um, you know, feeling a certain way about the world or, you know, feeling like, uh, it is their choice to, you know, seek these out, to stay here, whatever. Um, but I do like how um, also the motivation behind the main protagonist, you know, and from his previous life, he's got baggage from that previous life. And because he felt kind of like a um, unfulfilled person, you know, he wants to strive to the most in this new world and, you know, making something of himself but i love how the motivation of you know oh i'm going to be an adventurer or, i'm going to be the hero that everybody needs in this world uh isn't the first reactive thing it's just you know very simple things uh very smaller goals of like you know i want to be a better son i want to you know be in better physical uh practice i don't want to be such a, like a couch slob i don't want to be so illiterate you know it's doing things that matter you know and i i think the simplicity of it uh, and not only, again, the character's motivations, but also just the world of, like, you know, adding that mystery in there where, you know, he's seemingly in a world where nobody's alive anymore, you know? Um, he The only people he knows of are these reanimated corpses. Uh, and, you know, having the also the mystery behind, you know, well, 
what happened to them? Why are they here? You know, how did they come to be here? Uh, and, you know, them like, oh, we'll wait till you're older. Um, really cool. Uh, it leads uh, to most of the volume being um, kind of the, uh, I don't want to label it as this because it might sound more boring than it actually is, but um, it does kind of have that um, kind of expanded upon uh character or hero montage where he's like training you know so you, it's kind of in that where but instead of like a montage of him training and stuff like that it's him growing and you know obviously he is training he is learning but um you know much more in the sense that you know alongside this setup and this world building uh it's also uh laying heavily on the mystery aspect uh, of these characters that are really close to him but he knows very little about um, so again, like that's the part for me that draws me in, that makes me more intrigued about, you know, the characters, um, and just, you know, where this series might go. I feel like after this volume, it really has the opportunity to become more cliche or not, maybe cliche is not the bad word, but more mainstream. Uh, and while I still might like what this author can do with mainstream ideas in this world that's more restricted or more rooted in traditional fantasy, there is a part of me that is hopeful that it is a diversion of overall um, theme or just focus on things like in this first volume. Uh, but I still like this first volume, and just because there is, uh, you know, these downtime elements or these slower paced elements. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't fighting. Uh, you know, there is um, some one-on-one -on -one fighting uh, between, uh, you know, him and some trials he goes through training, uh, but as well as an actual threat and new character that I didn't mention uh, in the last part of the volume that really does kickstart um, Will on his journey going forward. So in a lot of ways, this is kind of like an origin or like, uh, yeah, I would say an origin is a perfect way to describe this first volume uh, for his character and uh, seeing, you know, just where um, this mysterious man that has memories of another world uh, came to be and, you know, how he came to uh, know so much about this place. But um, yeah, I don't want to make a long video, guys. Uh, overall, like I said, just really enjoyed... Uh, some of the diverging aspects of or, uh, you know, um, subverting expectations or subverting things that um, changed my expectations of the of the novel. Um, I will say, though, one minor gripe is that, uh, you know, the author, and, well, can't really fault the guy, right? This is going to happen to anybody that uh, writes uh, something. And I give props to people that write novels I've wanted to write for years. So I know that, uh, you know, it takes a lot, uh, especially for people that actually succeed in it. So um, not, not being, you know, antagonistic to the author at all, but uh, this is his first work. Um, and I think there is definitely signs that it's his first work. Um, not to say that any of the action parts of the volume uh, are bad or written to where you're not going to be able to understand what's going on but they just aren't as entertaining as or vivid or just um you know i don't know it doesn't have like a certain flair or um kind of just uh i don't want to say heart i don't know there's just something about it that when you read it you'll probably just get what i'm feeling but uh you know uh i feel like it's just like one of those things that's a byproduct or just, you know, uh, something that's going to be the case with uh, a new author. Um, but with that being said, though, um, with the action pieces not really being the main focus anyway, I thought pretty much every other part of the writing was done well. Um, I, I really think the author uh, stands out in the way he's able to um, you know, think out, uh, the world, um, you know, kind of weave in that mystery and also just, um, kind of the, the men, uh, not mentality, but thought process that the characters have. I think that is also, uh, where he kind of, uh, strives or, uh, excels at. Uh, so for my rating, I would give this a, uh, worth it. Um, I really, really think you guys should go check this out again. If you are a fantasy, uh, nut, if you're looking for something maybe a little bit different, maybe 
get something that, you know, maybe a lot of people haven't read and you don't have to worry about, you know, spoilers or people constantly being like, oh, this happens, this happens, that happens, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so there is also a manga version of this uh, that you can go check out as well. I have not checked out the manga personally, so I don't know how that translates into the graphic novel scene. Um, but it is out there if you prefer that method of read. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think this is one that I'm going to keep an eye on. I want to read the next volume, see where it goes. Um, and I think this is a series that as more people find it and read it, uh, you know, it might be one that, uh, may explode in popularity. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, an off, uh, off the spec remark, but, uh, I don't know. Something about it just seems, uh, you know, something that could lead into, uh, a fan base, uh, exploding but anyway guys that'll conclude this video um i hope you liked the review slash discussion we'll be back for more uh i am hoping or i guess i should say eagerly waiting for michael's return so that we can talk about some more of the series that um we've already started coverage with um there's a lot of manga a lot of uh episode stuff that we want to go over um i want to get more into the movie scene as well go back into that because um you know just because theaters are shut down or they're just slowly starting to reopen doesn't mean that we can't do some uh, more reviews in that front as well. So um, as always, we do have the gaming channel. You can check that out as well. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll just see you for the next one. So until then, guys, later and peace.